Hey Mustangs, in this video we're going to be taking a look at phospholipids and steroids. Now we've already taken a look at fats, and we can actually take what we learned with fats and apply it a little bit here when we, when we take a look at phospholipids. So starting with structure, because we know that structure is going to affect function, if you take a look at this phospholipid, if you need to go ahead and pause the video, but I want you to take a close look at this phospholipid here and see if you can compare it to the structure of a fat. Now, if you take a look, um, you should be able to notice some parts that you already saw in the fat structure. So down here at the bottom, um, we have our fatty acid chains. Okay, so here, you draw a carbon right there, there's a carbon right there. So at the corners we have our carbons. Of course, these are connected to hydrogens here. So that structure should have been something pretty easy for you to identify. So we have um, a fatty acid chain here. Uh, this one here, if you take a look at it, this is a saturated fatty acid, and we know that because we don't see any double bonds. This other fatty acid here has a double bond there, uh, which makes it an unsaturated fatty acid. Now, when we looked at fats, fats had three fatty acid tails or fatty acid chains. Here in a phospholipid, it only has two. So that's one thing that's unique about a phospholipid structure. It has two fatty acid, we could say, tails. So two fatty acid tails found in a phospholipid. Up here, you probably noticed this part here. Okay, we have a phosphate group, so you probably noticed that chemical group. This one here, you might not I'd be able to identify very easily, but we've actually seen it before. It's actually glycerol. Okay, so that's actually glycerol. If I was to turn this onto its side here, that would be glycerol right here. And one of these is connected to this fatty acid tail here. This is connected to the other fatty acid. And then this one is going to connect to the uh, phosphate group that we see here. And one thing you might not recognize is another structure up here that's actually called choline. Uh, so if we take a look like this, we could see the phospholipid in a slightly different way here. And we could see up, the, up at the top we have choline, a phosphate, glycerol in the, in the middle here, and then our fatty acid chains or fatty acid tails. Okay? Um, now, the interesting thing about this structure is that the top portion of it is hydrophilic, which means it can interact with water very easily, and the bottom portion is hydrophobic, it doesn't want to interact with water. So we can say that actually that phospholipids have a dual personality. Now because of this dual personality, we can actually simplify them. Uh, so they're often drawn and you probably remember this from ninth grade, uh, they're often drawn like this. A circle with two tails. Okay, So that's usually how you'll see a phospholipid simplified. And the circle is going to represent this hydrophilic head that we see here, which includes the choline, the phosphate, and the glycerol, which is hydrophobic. It's going to want to interact with water. And then the hydrophobic fatty acid tails down here at the bottom are represented by these lines. Okay, so you're going to see that a lot when you're talking about phospholipids because uh, that's just the simplified way and it identifies that split personality that it has with a hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tails. Right. Now, the major function of our phospholipids is going to be to build membranes. Not just the cell membrane, but all membranes. Um, all membrane-bound organelles, like the nucleus, mitochondria, they are also made out of membranes as well, and phospholipids. So one picture you'll often see of a membrane, in this case is a picture of a cell membrane, um, you can see here the circle with the tails coming down, that's the simplified phospholipid. Uh, so remember, this, the circle represents the hydrophilic end, and the tails represent the hydrophobic end. One thing you should notice about this image here is that we have kind of like a layer of phospholipids on one side and another layer on the other side. We have the hydrophilic ends to the outside and the hydrophobic tails in the middle. This is called a lipid bilayer. This lipid bilayer is what makes cells possible. So this unique structure, this uh, dual personality that these phospholipids have actually makes cells possible. Um, so it builds this strong barrier uh, around the cell, and it also, because of its unique um, structure, controls what goes in and out of the cell. So very, very important, and cells basically wouldn't be able to exist without these phospholipids. Here's another image, a little bit more complex, a little bit more complicated. It kind of shows the, uh, the heads, what they look like, and then the tails. Now, with steroids, steroids uh, have a very unique and obvious structure. You could always identify a steroid very easily. And the reason for that is this four carbon structure you see here. Okay? So right here we have a four carbon structure. Uh, we say a four carbon skeleton. So we have one there, 
here's another, here's another, here's another. Okay, so they have four rings um, that are a carbon skeleton. And all steroids are going to have these four rings. Now, knowing the chemical groups, here's where that comes into play. If you look, the chemical group sticking off, you can see a methyl group, you can see a hydroxyl group there. What chemical groups are stuck to those uh, carbon rings are going to determine the function um, and what that is going to do inside the body. Now in animals, animals, their, their most important steroid is going to be cholesterol. And the reason for that is cholesterol is the precursor. And what we mean by that, it's actually used to make other steroids. Uh, the steroid hormones. So here, this what you've seen here so far, this is a picture of cholesterol. Now you might think cholesterol is bad. Uh, that's a very common misconception. Now the reason cholesterol is bad has to do with the fact that here in the US, in America, we eat foods that contain too much cholesterol. So cholesterol is actually a necessity. We need cholesterol, but we the problem is we take in too much cholesterol and that's what makes cholesterol bad. So looking at this here, this is a super important molecule. We're going to take this, we're going to take cholesterol and use it to make um, our steroid hormones. Um, we can get cholesterol, of course, by eating and also by synthesizing it inside of our liver. Now here, here's a picture of six different steroid hormones. So you could tell when you look at each one, they have those four carbon rings as part of its skeleton, as part of its structure. And then you look at the different chemical groups and to each one, they are slightly different. Okay. Um, there are some big differences between some versus another, uh, but for the most part, they have uh, a lot of very similarities. But it's those slight differences, those slight differences is what cause them to have different functions. All right. Last thing here with steroids, um, the main function. So the main function of steroids are uh, as chemical messengers, hormones. Whenever you hear chemical messengers, just think hormones. And hormones are going to be involved in communication throughout the body. And the second thing is going to be components of cell membranes. Uh, so here you see in this picture, you have little pieces of cholesterol. We can see the phospholipids here, the hydrophilic head with the hydrophobic tails, and then cholesterol kind of in between every now and then. Cholesterol actually helps stabilize cell membranes. Um, so they're a very important component of the cell membrane. So that's why trying to cut cholesterol completely out of your diet is going to be a bad thing. Now, another thing I wanted to say about um, the steroid hormones, most of, the people, most of the time when people hear steroids, they think of um, sports and performance enhancing drugs. Um, that's because those sp uh, specific steroid hormones can actually increase muscle mass, um, but not all steroids do that. So I wanna be very clear with that. So not our st all steroids are like what you think of when you're thinking about sports and performance enhancing drugs. Okay. All right, uh, go ahead and study your phospholipids and your steroids, and uh, we'll talk about them more in class.